So I'm showing um, a quick process of how to begin and execute a drawing in Pixlr. Number one, we have selected Pixlr E. Um, <clears throat> you'll see recently edited images up here if you're on the same computer and browser that you've used in the past. For example, I'm on Chrome right now. If I opened up Safari, none of this would be here or different stuff would be here. So keep that in mind. We're going to select Create New right here. We want the pre-selected uh, Full HD, and we're going to put in a title. Mr. Scalzo's Landscape. And then we're going to hit Create. Now we have this checkerboard background, and we're going to begin with the drawing tool. Okay, um, I like to set my brush to about uh, 12 in size. It's a good uh, setting. And the softness at 20% is great. Also, my color is set to black, you can see here. So now I'm going to go in and draw my object. I wanted to add, um, I wanted to have a, a house in my image. So despite the fact that drawing with uh, computer tools is not 100% um, great or fair, but depending on your skill level, you should be able to do your, do your best on this. And that is all that I can expect. If you happen to draw a line you're not happy with, you can go to the edit menu and choose undo. So now that I have my basic shape in here, I'm gonna add some details like a big picture window on one side. This is reminiscent of the house that I lived in when I was a little kid. So it's like the thing that I drew a lot <laughs> whenever I was given an assignment like draw a house. Now you can draw all the details that you want to sh show in your image, in your objects, and then you could add color, or you could add color as a separate step later in your process. You could colorize the whole image. It's a little side chimney action right there. So I'm going to add a new object. So I'm going to add a new layer. The layer menu is here. You choose new layer. And over here you can see the secondary uh, layer that has been added. So in this image, I have chosen to draw something from nature, such as a tree. So I'm going to give it my basic broccoli tree. I have drawn this tree a million and one times, and um, for this kind of illustration, it works fine. Knowing that, I'm going to add color in another way soon. So in this um, foreground area of the image, I'd actually like to move 
my house down. So I have chosen the selection tool here, the arrange tool, and clicked on my house and I'm able to move it independent of the tree because it's a different size. I would also like to shrink it down a tiny bit because I feel like it is taking over the, uh, the composition a little bit too much. All right, now I'm gonna add another new layer select the layer, make sure I'm on it as I grab a brush, and now I'm going to draw some more foreground items like a sidewalk or a walkway leading away from the house and up to the edge of the road, which is gonna be here. I'd like to make this touch and then go a little bit further down. And then here would be a curb, and that goes all the way down like that. I'm also gonna close up this line right at the edge of the house so that when I take away the house, you can see that it is a solid line and it's closed in there. Okay, additionally, and this will make more sense in a moment, I'm gonna draw like a little middle ground line here that goes behind the house and a little patch of what will be a different color going forward like that. So you can see when I take away each layer, the objects and the separations are all right there. Now I'm gonna add another layer and it is going to be the background. So we've now addressed foreground, middle ground, and background. So I want some wispy hills, not mountains necessarily. And then we'll just draw another layer of what will be a different color through the middle. Now, this might again look a little weird because they overlap, but now as we start to add color, you'll see those things fill in and block out the background so we don't see those things all the time. So I'm gonna choose the fill tool or the bucket, as we say, and I'm gonna choose a color from my house. It's gonna be a blue house. And each facade, each face of the house is gonna have a different, slightly different shade of blue. So that one's gonna be a little bit darker. And then as we go, uh, the roof is going to be gray, not too different from what's already there. A lighter shade of gray will go in here, for that's the um, roof line, the gutters, I guess. And here we're going to do the concrete front steps in that same shade of gray. And then we can do some... I think we'll pretend there's like white shades in the windows and we'll do that like that. All right, and let's give the front door a color. Let's make it red. Okay. Now as we've colored, oh, we need some red for the bricks of this chimney. And um, you can see I'm, I'm kind of quick with the, with the bucket tool. Um, and, and that's what it's made for. It's made to like fill colors in quickly. Top of the chimney right there. All right, so you may say, Mr. Scalzo, you got all these lines in front of your, your house. Well, you you can look here and the layers are stacked. And the important thing to know is you can reorder the layers so that they make sense for you. So we're gonna drag the house to the top layer, to the foreground, and it's going to pop in front of all of those other things. And isn't that nice? So uh, let's do our way background area. So I'm gonna use like a dark, I'd like a distant color, you know, the distance to be a darker green color back here. 
uh, and we're going to select the bucket tool once again and then use the color there and there whoa okay so obviously uh, this lower area we're going to need to uh, work on how we colorize that so we'll we'll deal with that in a second but this color is okay for this but it's just like we were talking in a, mo a moment ago is we need to realign the layers so that that other uh, layer goes in front. Now we're going to choose like a blue sky, but it's going to be like a faded gray blue like that. So as you see, the, the coloring like this, it really starts to fill in things. And now we've moved layer three up into the front and we should be able to do a bit of colorizing that'll make this look very nice. Oh boy. Hey, just don't forget to undo if you ever make a mistake like that. So the tree is being blocked by a couple of things. So we got to move it up in the menu as well. And you can see how it pops through the front there in a nice way. So I'm feeling good about a lot of this. I just, <laughs> there's a couple of things. If you ever are working and you have to, you have to, it's okay to click your layers on and off to see. So the, this walkway that we have is, there's, an, there's a line over it. So I think I wanna um, fix that. So I am gonna go in with an eraser. And don't be alarmed by the fact that it's turning green. The reason it's green is because it is, uh, it's showing through the layer underneath it. So it's all fine. I don't think I erased it very well, so I'm going to try again. I'm going to get in there really close and just knock out that little section. I'm going to uh, make the brush a little harder edged to. There, that's a little bit better. So if I just clear this of all of the blue, this light, light pale blue that I used, I'll have a better shot of filling it back in afterwards.
So as you can see, it sometimes is beneficial to go in and really do a nice job of fixing something up so it fits with the rest of your image uh, much better. Now I am not done with this. I have more to do and I will continue to work on it. But just remember the importance of separation of the layers that allows you to create things independent of each other and that you can then go back in and um, make changes and do things in a cool way that are um, that are uh, ultimately creatively satisfying for you. Thanks for watching.